you have been very upfront of the pack when it comes to like stressing the importance of branding. Um, I saw you got into it last year with, as a, I don't remember if it was NC State, doesn't really matter, but you were kind of flexing, flexing a little bit about how you guys were first to like get your guys verified and just overall like a social media presence. And then, you know, obviously you've been vocal about the singlets and the apparel and stuff like that. Are, did you kind of uh, see the way that the world was going or is this something that like the kids were bringing to you or like, you know, how did you kind of, uh, how did you kind of lead the charge? It seems like to me, you've led the charge on the branding and social media wave. Yeah, I would say, I think my group with probably David Taylor and myself, back when we were going through college, we might've been the first ones that really understood how powerful this was going to be in the future. Um, and I think that's why it opened up a lot of doors for us when we did leave. I, you know, we, we changed the game and I'll be the first one to say it. Me and David, you know, and J.O. a little bit, we changed the game when it came to how senior level athletes were getting paid. Um, I remember, you know, when I got my first offer uh, for a shoe deal and I went in and Tom's like, you're not signing that. And I was like, what do you mean I'm not signing that? And it was one of the things where I actually got offered to have my own shoe. And he goes, you can't have a shoe unless you win a world Olympic title. No so, way. <laughs> so I, I turned down that deal and I had the, I had the same deal that David got for the Adidas shoe. So I would have had, you know, my own shoe like he had where I would have got royalties off of it. And uh, Tom wouldn't let me sign it. And a big thing was just the principle of you have to earn that right. You know, Dude, everyone that, in the past has earned that right. Um, that was a debate, was though. That was, that was a debate at one time. Um, I think it was Cormier that people had an issue with, wasn't it? It was me and D.C. Me and D.C. actually got into it a little bit about it. And were you on and Tom's I, side against Cormier? I was on Tom's side but I've changed my mindset on that a lot now. Yeah, got because it. Because if I sign that deal, I probably wouldn't have student loans today. Yeah. Um, Can you, okay, obviously you can't, heard, you can't tell us the number and maybe yeah. they didn't, did they give you a number? Let's get there. Let's start there. I had a good, you know, I had a decent base number um, and I was able five to get figures? the basics. Huh? Five figures? Um. I, I would say from what I've heard by the time, you know, some of these deals were all said and done with royalties being paid out and shoes sold, depending on how big your market was. And I had the Iowa market behind me. I probably could have made close to six figures. Damn. Oh, man. Damn. So. Is David still with them? He's not, is he? No, he's with Scrap Life now, but he right. was, you, those shoes were everywhere. Every kid had that neon yellow M2 or the oh, red, no. white, and blue M2. Those things were everywhere. But you were post collegiate when this shoe opportunity came for you, right? It was right after I graduated. Yeah. You know, I just made my first world team. It would have it would have been a big deal. That is crazy. Yeah, that would have been a pretty opportune time, I feel like. Well, yeah. I I think you're right. It was you and David at the time cuz like the reason why I have at the time, you know, why I had a strong opinion about you is because that was I I graduated in 2013, so I was in high school and the first thing that really got me on like NCAA wrestling was going to the division one nationals here at Des Moines. And, yeah. um, I've, I haven't missed one since. And since then I've just gone full, full bore. I mean, I wrestled my whole life, but I didn't care about the, the college wrestling scene, but it was like you for sure. A hundred percent David for sure. Obviously Dake, um, that were like the guys that everybody had like strong feelings for, whether they liked you guys or they didn't like you guys. Uh, you signed a deal with flips too, right away. Right. Yeah, I signed a couple deals right away. My brother uh, really helped me get some good deals, and I was, you know, it was fun, especially when how you're do winning because you, you're getting all the bonuses. How do you know, though, like, what to ask for? Like, how do you know what you're worth? We pushed it as far as we could go. And, you know, I remember coming in one time, and Metcalf came up to me and he goes, hey, uh, thanks. And I was like, thanks for what? He goes, ASICs had to raise my money because if they found out, if I found out what they signed you for, they knew I would have been mad. Um, so we really changed the game when it came to that. Got it. So well, how do you feel now that these, what these guys are getting in college? Like, I, I mean, obviously you gotta be happy for your own guys, but on a personal level, is there some like, damn, <laughs> uh, you got that gift of Tom. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I remember, and you know, here's another story about branding where we were ahead of our time. I remember it was either freshman or sophomore year when I first started my Twitter account, uh, I went to Eustace and he was our director of ops at the time. And he did a lot of the social media. 
I said, Hey, can you tweet my handle? You know, after I get a win or something, can, can you use my, my, my handle instead of Tony? He goes, no, are you, you kidding me? We're not doing that. That's crazy. And it's so crazy how like that was uh, 10, 12 years ago. And now we're here today and we're being told like, this is the way to do it. You got to grow your athletes brand and the university's brand and you're tagging athletes now and you're collaborating with them and you're making them personal videos and you're making every kid and their brother and sister, you know, and anyone that walks on a campus with them graphics and all these different things. And it's just crazy how fast this transition. Um, we're trying to even get further ahead. You know, now it's turned into video and, you know, hopefully one day we can, you know, bring Zach Bogle down to UNC for a recruiting trip and he puts on his virtual reality glasses and he's standing on the mat at the NCAA tournament and he looks down and he's in a UNC singlet. So yeah. uh, we're, we're trying to really get ahead of, you know, anything that's possible.